From Hollywood, it's the Steve Allen Show. From the Steve Allen Playhouse, I'm Mike Steve Allen. We not only have the prettiest girls in the audience here at the Steve Allen Show, but also you'll have to admit some of the strangest musical instruments. <laughs> and this gentleman plays perhaps the strangest of them all. He plays the bicycle, and his name is Frank Zappa. Thank you. You actually play a bicycle? Uh, yeah. Are you in the Musicians' Union? Uh, no. Do you play any other musical instrument, anything more conventional perhaps? Guitar, vibes, bass, and drums. Guitar, vibes, bass, drums, and bicycle. <laughs> this bicycle will travel from his bass to his drums to his guitar. Uh, how did you happen to uh, pick up your first bicycle? I, mean, I was discussing this before with uh, some of the people backstage. I believe that a lot of the people have actually played bicycles from time to time. But when they're young, they take a piece of cardboard and a clothespin and attach it to the a rear wheel, and when it goes around, it makes that noise, and you're playing a bicycle then. Oh, I see. You mean when they pretend they have a little motor and make it sound like a motorbike. Yes, we've all done that. Well, is that what you do? You make a motorbike noise? I see a couple of bikes over here. Perhaps we'd better go over and demonstrate and show them what you do. Frank Zappa, Z-A-P-P-A, -P -P -A, huh? Well, here we are, friends. Stereo bikes. <laughs> uh, you have a... What are these tools in your hands? Uh, these, uh pair of Louis Dalton style drumsticks and a bass bow that I borrowed from your bass man in the back. Louis Dalton style drumsticks. Does Louis know what you're doing with them? <laughs> I don't think he'd approve very <laughs> How long have you been playing bike, uh, Frank? <laughs> About two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> he probably was telling insurance or something. He thought, what's something real jerky that'll get me on the Steve Allen show? <laughs> Playing bicycle. What could be sillier than that? And he did it, and here we are. That's probably how it happened. You really only been playing two weeks? Yes. What do you do ordinarily besides this? I'm a composer. Ah. Uh, might we be familiar with any of your songs as yet? Uh, well, you'll be fam you will be familiar with some of my songs as of next week. But I did the score for The World's Greatest Sinner. The... <laughs> and, and who might that be? Uh... <laughs> Tommy Manville or who? Tell us about that. That's the name of the film. It's the world's worst movie, and I did the music for it. The world's greatest sinner? Yes. It's a Tim Carey production, Frenzy Productions. Frenzy Productions. <laughs> it's, an, it's an independent company. They all are these days, the way things are going. But, uh... They shot it in El Monte. <laughs> so they... <laughs> And they shot my agent, Mel Monty. You know, that could happen to anybody. Uh, who was in it? Uh, Tim Carey and a cast of a thousand people that he found down on Main Street sometime. <laughs> the world's greatest sinner. Does Tim play the title role? Uh, yes. And you, you wrote the score for that. What instrumentation did you use? Uh, three harmonicas and a bicycle or what? Well, uh, we had a 55-piece orchestra, and we had a very unusual reed section. We had... <laughs> they couldn't read. <laughs> we had contrabass clarinet, uh, two bassoons, no, four bassoons, uh, two oboes, English horn, four flutes and piccolo, uh, four trumpets, four horns, and four trombones, and a tuba, and uh, I forget, there's a bunch of... And a partridge in a pear tree. Well, it sounds like a very interesting uh, inventory. We recorded, it, we recorded it in the Chafee High School, uh, Chafee College, Little Theater in uh, Alta Loma, California. Of course, it was a runaway production then, wasn't it? <laughs> right down the line. For 12 hours. We <laughs> well, we'll look forward to that. Now, as for the uh, job of the moment, uh, you want to play the New Departure Blues, or exactly what are you going to uh, play on us here? I'll just let you show us what happens. The first thing that I should do is demonstrate to you the different types of sounds that you can get from a bicycle, because it actually does make some very interesting uh, sounds. And, of course, that's what we're all interested in. There's new sounds, yes. Like... That, that's one of them. 
the sounds. <laughs> yes. Oh, you have a microphone down there. I see. Well, I'll, I'll need this microphone to pick up the next sound. It's uh, you have to hold it right there. All right. Hello? I'm sorry, you'll have to leave a message. He's not here right now. That's pretty good. Oh, there's a hole in these things, isn't there? Did, did you, were you just whistling through there? No, uh, what you happen if you, you tried to blow air. You just, you just blow air and did it whistle? Can I blow air and it'll whistle? Blow real easy. Oh, you blow easy? Yeah, man. Includes my arrangement of on a bicycle. Don't worry too. When you get home tonight, friends, try this on your own bike. When you don't have a lot of wise seekers around. What else? Well, the next thing that I'd like to demonstrate is some of the other noises possible, and then I'd like to have uh, you participate with me uh, in a small improvisation for two bicycles, uh, pre-recorded tape, and uh, instrumental ensemble. Great. Okay. Now here's what else you can do. You can pluck the spokes like a harp. Sounds like the uh, Kyoto of Japan. I can play uh, my nose. <laughs> hey, do that again. I mean that other thing. over the spokes in a rapid motion, this produces the... Uh, That's foam stick. Yeah, it's similar to the effect of the uh, cardboard in the clothespin. Like the uh, steel drums of Jamaica and uh, Trinidad. You can also bang on the frame, and if you're lucky enough to have a bicycle that has a squeaking seat, you can squeak the seat up <laughs> Explode the handlebar, you can explode the handlebar. Uh, that premise is granted, there's no limit to what you can do. Well, would you uh, help me with this, please? I'll be glad to accompany you. <laughs> Looks rather uncomfortable to sit on, I must say. Well, there's a different technique for the upside down bicycle. Oh. The first thing you do is you put the kickstand down. Uh, and I'm you glad can, to hear that. You can turn the wheels around, you know, and then. Yeah. And then you can put the brakes on. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> where it says four bar rest, you just give it a little of that. <laughs> and I'll uh, have you uh, put the bow on here. See, so you can go like that. You take this, please. And that's you, like fingernails on the blackboard. Is right? <laughs> now, uh, this this may be a little bit new to you. But I think that <laughs> it doesn't come up in the ordinary conversation. <laughs> well, the, uh, I should suggest that you alternate between bowing and uh, plucking. An aerojet. <laughs> Those are two air plants here in the <laughs> Bow it and pluck it, and uh, if you can scratch across the uh, bow and pluck it, the basket. Yeah. Now, the whole idea that we're going to uh, do here in this improvised uh, concerto for two bicycles, uh, a pre-recorded tape, and the musicians in the back, is that you're supposed to express yourself freely without any kind of... Uh, you have to let your front down and... You have to, you have to uh, just feel your way through it because it's, you're completely released. You're a composer yourself and you're 
know that the standard method of notation is very difficult, you know. And I ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> well, this will help. Now, uh, <laughs> you write the music on a road map for this thing. Uh, That's how Route 66 was written, you think I'm kidding? Uh, I am kidding, but not too successfully. Yeah, go ahead. I got to, to tell the man in the control booth who is ready to run the tape, if we just give me a quick glass of the tape so we can get started. Now, the tape is pre-recorded electric noises that uh, I stuck together. Uh, I gave my wife a clarinet and told her to play it, and uh, she doesn't play a clarinet. <laughs> and then, I didn't even have a wife. How do you like that? <laughs> then I did some electric things to it, and it's very interesting. You'll hear a woman singing in there someplace, and I, I recorded that off the radio. <laughs> I stuck it in. But now, the, the way we work this is, when the man in the control booth feels moved to add his electronic part to our work here, he will throw a little switch, it just lets some of this noise through, and then I requested the, the uh, musicians that if they feel so moved, make any noise possible on your instrument. No, uh, try and refrain from musical tones. In fact, uh, <laughs> they won't have any trouble with that order. If it would be possible for you to take it away, fellas. I'm sorry. If it would be possible for you to put some sort of objects on the strings of the piano, you'll get. Uh, uh, that's yeah. good. I prefer you to play it that way. <laughs> All season long, Don. All right. Now we'll, we'll start. Are we on? He told me to a poem while this was going. On my cycle car on a seat in back of me. I took a bump at 95 and rode on ruthlessly. That's 32 bars. We're playing like we went to 32 bars tonight. You know? Well, Mr. Zappa. I must say that I'm always in favor of enlarging the horizons, at least in peering anxiously beyond the horizons of any field of human endeavor or interest. And therefore, I uh, congratulate you on your uh, farsightedness. And as for your music, don't ever do it around here again. No, seriously, it was a very amusing and entertaining and stimulating experiment. Is there anything you'd like to say in closing? Yes, I would. Next week, his record is being released called How's Your Bird. And really? Yes. I brought a dub of it over here. I don't think you've heard it yet. And it's, uh, go and buy it. It's wonderful. Great. Everything but a bicycle. In there. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Zappa. Thank you. You know that music sounds a little bit like the music that a very gifted 
Well, I sat on the pie there for a minute. Woo, that was a close one, folks. You could have had me that time. I wasn't looking for you. You did. No, uh, the, uh, Alwyn Nikolai is his name. A very gifted choreographer. I'll go to that mic. Very gifted choreographer. Uh, we used to use him on the show when we were on Sunday evenings. And, uh, he does his own music. I guess music is the best word they can find for it. And it sounds very much like that. Uh, he, you know, plays uh, tin cans backwards and records them at strange tape speeds. And then to this strange conglomeration of sounds, he, um, creates dances, choreography. And uh, he's uh, really a genius uh, in this particular field. I guess we must have to let somebody around the country talk right now. Uh, another Sammy Fain song will be performed for you in just a moment. Great song, Secret Love, will be sung by Jenny Smith, and then after that we'll be getting Sammy out, and we have a few other surprises, I guess, even to me. Hurry right back. <laughs> Susie? Yes. 